you've arrived at Noble Growth. Have you ever thought about starting your own side business? You probably have. You've probably even had some good ideas, but never really followed through with them. That's okay. Most people get stuck in the ideation phase. The good news is that if you are able to get some quick wins, the likelihood of your business succeeding goes through the roof. One of the most important quick wins is building a clean, functional website that converts. People often ask me how to do this, and there are a ton of misconceptions around how much a website costs, how difficult and time consuming it is to build a website, and what it takes to keep a website up and running. That's why today, I'm going to share Noble Growth's five-step process for how to build websites that convert. Step one, vision. The first question I always ask when meeting with a new client is, in your wildest dreams, what's your vision for what your website or brand will actually look like or accomplish once we're finished with this project? To make the question more concrete, I'll ask clients to provide specific examples of websites or brands that they, that they would like to emulate. Then we dig into what they like specifically about each of these examples so we can bring together the best of all worlds. Aside from vision, it's also important to understand the purpose of the website, as this will inform which platform we decide to build the website on. Typically, if it's a content-based website that's focused mostly on branding, blogging, and positioning for a services company, I recommend Squarespace. If it's an e-commerce website with multiple products that will require order, tr order tracking and fulfillment, I recommend Shopify. And if a client wants to get fancy with parallax interactions and custom design modules, perhaps for a VR company or animation house that needs to showcase their design chops, I recommend Webflow. None of these platforms require writing a single line of code. That means you won't need to hire a developer to build it, and you won't need to hire a developer to make any changes once it's been built. You may, however, decide to hire an agency like Noble Growth that excels at design, copywriting, and conversion rate optimization, so you can focus on your own core competencies and really boost your business early on. In any case, of all the website platforms, my personal favorite is Squarespace. It's so intuitive and easy to use, and aesthetically it really can't be beat. Plus, Squarespace is always coming out with new design templates that keep your website looking fresh. Once we've decided on the vision for the website, the example sites to emulate, and the platform to build it on, then it's time to move on to step two, wireframing. Creating a wireframe for your website is crucial because it allows you to think conceptually about the key elements of your website rather than getting bogged down with colors and fonts and all the nitty gritty details, which can be overwhelming and discouraging. My favorite tool for wireframing is Lucidchart. Lucidchart has a free version of their product that pretty much has everything you'd need to create a simple professional wireframe. Your wireframe is the scaffolding of your website. It's the structure. At Noble Growth, we use a super effective formula to consistently create website structures that convert. That formula is why, how, what. First, you need to answer the question of why. Why should someone care about your product or business? People are busy. They can be doing any number of things besides looking at your website. What is going to spark intrigue and grab their attention so they continue to keep scrolling? A great example of a company that always starts with why is Apple. You don't see Apple products, product pages starting with the specs. That would be towards the middle or bottom of the page. Rather, Apple always starts by focusing on the why, why this product will improve the customer's life in the deepest sense possible. Think Different was an incredibly successful marketing slogan to that end. It gets at the core of why people love Apple products. Apple products allow you to unleash your creativity and showcase how unique and different you are to the world. Apple products have a certain rebelliousness about them, akin to the hippie movement in the 1960s and 70s. Steve Jobs was able to tap into this core sentiment with his Think Different slogan, similar to how Nike was able to tap into the hard work and hustle ethos of top athletes with their Just Do It slogan. 
So don't start with, we sell computers, lots of memory, powerful hard drives, high quality shoes. That's the what. Instead, start with the why. The why section is typically called the hero section of the website. This will include your logo, your tagline, which should answer the question of why, and some powerful visuals to convey how someone will feel when they're using your product or engaging with your company. Just below the hero section, you should think about leveraging the principle of authority and perhaps also the principle of social proof as part of answering the question of why someone should care. So if you have a cool new high-tech mattress company, for example, just below the hero image and headline, you might want to include a string of logos of press outlets that have featured your company, or perhaps positive five-star reviews from Trustpilot, or awards that your company has won from prestigious organizations like Forbes or TechCrunch. The next section of your wireframe should answer the question of how. How will this product, service, or business fit into people's lives? How easy or difficult is it to get started? What are the hurdles someone will need to go through, and how are those hurdles mitigated with money-back guarantees or other reassuring policies? If possible, you should keep your How It Works section simple and either have a three-step infographic or a short video that communicates the process for getting started. One thing I should note is that, in today's world, you are usually way better off letting people try your product for free at first and then only charging them once they go beyond a certain level of usage. That will give your company the greatest number of potential leads at the top of the funnel that you can then work to convert through relationship building and retargeting through the middle and bottom of your funnel. Spotify does this, Zoom does this, Netflix does this, almost all great companies nowadays do this. That strategy is often called the freemium model. After the how section, it's time to convey what it is that you are actually offering. For product companies, this often includes images of the product, perhaps also graphics showcasing the features and benefits of the product. And for services companies, it'll probably include the specific offerings that the company specializes in, maybe with pricing to go along with each offering. And for content websites, this section will include your latest blog posts, podcast episodes, or whatever content you want to feature most prominently. The what section is where you make your final ask. That's why it's always good to leverage the six principles of persuasion in this section, just like how you leverage them in the hero section at the top of the wireframe. And it will help if these principles are leveraged just below or just above the CTA, the call to action. For example, if your website is a pre-launch page for a book that you're writing, your call to action may be pre-ordering the book on Amazon. So while people are looking at your page and considering whether or not to click the button to pre-order the book from Amazon, they're thinking about why they should buy this book, what's in it for them. They might be shown positive reviews, testimonials from people who love the book and why they love the book, especially if these testimonials are from well-known thought leaders or celebrities. It might include press that the book has gotten from reputable sources, or any special offers, such as maybe you're offering a signed copy of the book to the first 100 people who pre-order. All of these tactics will help you boost your conversion rate, and I would recommend listening to episode two of the Noble Growth Podcast if you'd like a refresher on the six principles of persuasion and how you can leverage them in the hero section and in the final call to action section. Once you've finished wireframing the why, the how, and the what of your website in Lucidchart, or perhaps Sketch and Figma, which are also good tools for wireframing, you're ready to move on to step three, building. Whether you've chosen Squarespace, Shopify, or Webflow, by the way, I don't recommend WordPress. It's clunky and outdated, and it's not very responsive on different devices. You'll need to select a template that's as close as possible to your original website vision, which was step one. At Noble Growth, we have a running list of our favorite templates that we use for building Squarespace and Shopify sites. And you can do the same thing just by spending some time going through the various template options and marking your favorite ones. Once you've selected your template, then it's just a matter of building your wireframe into a functional website reality. 
So follow the why, the how, the what flow that you've already planned out, and stay flexible as you experiment with different images, different copy lines, and different persuasion tactics. Feel free to ask your friends for input along the way, because sometimes it can be really helpful to just get someone's totally blank perspective on what your website look like, looks like without any previous knowledge or conceptions about what it is or what it should be. And if you run into trouble during the building phase, know that there are a ton of resources online for how to deal with pretty much any problem that you're likely to encounter. Once you finish building the site, then you're on to the second to last step, SEO. SEO could really be its own podcast episode, and it probably will be in the near future. So for now, I'll just focus on the high level points. The first point is that you need to connect your site to an HTTPS domain in order for your site to be discoverable on all devices. And I'm always surprised at how many websites, even modern websites, are not HTTPS secure. Apple devices in particular heavily dissuade users from going to a site that's not HTTPS secure, and they'll even give you a pop-up that says you're about to go someplace unsafe before the person even sees your website. Most people will not go forward to your website if they see that pop-up. So make sure to follow the domain setup instructions for whatever website platform you've chosen, and make sure that your site reads HTTPS in the URL. Also, it helps if your domain is unique. So rather than using a common English word for your company that's going to have tons of competition for traffic, try making up a word or adding an extra adjective or modifier or number to your domain name and company name so it's unique. One company that does this well is a production company in LA called Lemon Light. They could have just gone with the name Limelight but instead they made the name unique and thereby improved their SEO by having a slightly different spin on the colloquial term. Similarly, Carbon38 is a super easy website to find online because there is nothing else on earth named that. If they had just named their company Carbon, they'd have an incredibly difficult time getting to rank on page one of Google search. Once your website is HTTPS secure, the next most important thing is to verify your business on Google Business, especially if you have a brick and mortar site and business that people are gonna to need to navigate to in Google Maps. Do this by searching for your business in Google and then either adding a business page if it doesn't yet exist or claiming your own business page if it already exists. You'll also wanna optimize your site's metadata. Metadata is simply the data that describes the content of your website. So if you upload a picture of an ice cream top truck for your company, Joe's Ice Cream, then you'll want to label that image as Joe's Ice Cream Truck so it pops up in Google image search results whenever someone looks for that, which can be really helpful if journalists are trying to cover your company. You'll want to do the same thing for every page and section of your website. So when someone types in about Joe's ice cream, they get a nice, useful description like, founded in 2002, Joe's ice cream is an award-winning dessert company that uses the highest quality ingredients from their organic farm in California. After adding meta descriptions to your site, the final step in SEO process, which is an optional step, is AdWords. And for some companies, it's really important to own certain keywords. For instance, when you type in climate change candidate into Google, for me, you get two ads. You get an ad from Tom Steyer and an ad from Mike Bloomberg. Both of these candidates are vying for the title of the best democratic presidential candidate in regards to climate change. So they're competing on AdWords for that top spot. And every time someone searches for the top climate change candidate, and they click on the ad and end up on one of the candidates' websites, then presumably that website visitor is more likely to perceive the candidate as the top climate change candidate and then vote for them the next election. It may be too soon for you to implement AdWords for your own business. You might not be at that stage yet, but it's worth thinking about what keywords or phrases would be the most relevant for your company to own. And many web building sites 
I know Squarespace does, come with free AdWords credit. So it's worth trying out and playing around with it if you think it might be beneficial. Noble Growth also offers AdWords as one of our modules, so feel free to reach out if you need some assistance. Finally, this episode would be incomplete without mentioning analytics, the fifth and final step in the process. This is vital because you need to measure traffic and conversions to your website if you want to achieve product market fit. That means adding a Facebook pixel and Google pixel and Twitter pixel if you're going to be running ads on those platforms. It also means creating events for specific actions that are taken on your site, such as adding to cart, subscribing to your newsletter, and so on. And the most widely used tool for tracking website conversion events is definitely Google Analytics, but my own personal opinion is that it's a super clunky and non-intuitive tool. So for my clients, I typically recommend Oribi.io. It's a bit more pricey, but it allows you to create super simple and effective analytics flows, such as homepage to add to cart to checkout. So you can just see how many peop- what percentage of people that start on the homepage end up on the checkout page. Really easy. And this will really help your marketing efforts down the road as well. Once you have your analytics set up, your search optimized, and your website built, you're good to go. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. Uh, Thank you for everyone who has reviewed the podcast. It's a brand new podcast, so any reviews or ratings really help out. And if you have any feedback or if you're interested in hiring Noble Growth to help you build a website for your own business, feel free to reach out to mattimore at noblegrowth.co anytime. We can't wait to see what you guys come up with. And until next week's episode... Keep growing. Welcome to Noble Growth. You are this is universe. And you are creating it. At every moment. Because you see it starts now. Fascinating. You know, you can't bore people into buying your product. You can only interest them in buying it. So we have to be really clear on what we want them to know about us.